Welcome to the best of TV Burp 4. A look back at my favourite moments from previous series. Remember when a woman was injured at a Nazi rally on Casualty? Estimate two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Gannets prefer to commit suicide than be interviewed by Alan Titchmarsh. What a sight, these are Gannets. <laughs> Dalai Lama's battery runs out on medicine men. <laughs> Pinky Eaters this week told the story of Dave Nunley, who was addicted to cheese. Cheese! <laughs> and crisps. <laughs> crisps! <laughs> so, let's have a look at some of his typical meals. If I'm tired and perhaps can't be bothered to stand in front of a cheese grater for a little while or just had a hard day, I suppose, then I should go for the, the easy meal, just off the lump, just with practically so many crisps. Yeah, it's much better off the lump, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it keeps its flavour better. This is dish number two. This is my hula hoop special, very simple. And there's one, one ready-cooked hula hoop. And he's getting extra minerals the from those fingernails, too. Mm. So that's where the holes in cheese come from. Here we have dish number three. Great achievement. This is like a cookery programme for a mouse. <laughs> no, I shouldn't laugh, because it's caused his whole family a lot of grief, particularly his sister. You see, all she wants is to share a restaurant meal with him. David, to, to me and to the girls, and I'm sure to Dan and Harry, it would mean a great deal if you could enjoy even a McDonald's with us. So we could go out together. What's he going to order? A cheeseburger without the bun and the burger? <laughs> so it's the usual thing. Dave has set a challenge. Your challenge, your goal for the end of this process is that after four weeks, you're going to be able to sit down with your family and share a hot meal. <laughs> so, how's he get on? <laughs> he ate a piece of chicken! in the street now. And just what does Dev keep down his trousers? Maybe we could even break up in a packet of, uh... <laughs> Gary Baldy. Mm, well, we fresh out the future of retailing. A packet of Gary Baldy biscuits. Oh. Oh, thanks, Dev. Uh, oh, there seems to be a, an extra raisin on that one. Uh, um, oh, go on, then. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's been quite a week for the Barlow family. Naughty Tracy clocked her boyfriend over the head and killed him. And amongst all these shenanigans, the murder, the police investigation, who keeps his head whilst all around are losing theirs? Ken. He's just so cool, Ken, isn't he? This is largely because he is, in fact, a ventriloquist's dummy. <laughs> Usually operated by Deirdre. Large is life and twice is <laughs> He called this morning, not long after the day. <laughs> <laughs> but every now and then, she lets someone else have a go. Two other people are most precious to me. It's not your fault. Oh, yeah, well, whose fault is it? <laughs> you're probably like me. When you're bored, you hook up the dog to the sofa and go chariot racing. <laughs> you can't do bored every day. <laughs> we all do it. Dog, sofa, chariot racing. <laughs> it's actually been considered for the Olympics. On your marks.
I have been enjoying monster moves on five, in which large things are moved. <laughs> <laughs> this week, they were attempting to transport a German aircraft from the Second World War, which was a little frustrating for them, but there's no need for bad language. Pat has assembled a team of friends and keen amateurs to help him realise his dream, including his wife, Annette Spaulding, who shares his obsession for this aircraft. They've been coming every summer for seven years in a row. They even spent their honeymoon searching for the Fokker. <laughs> it's a type of aircraft. <laughs> Childish. Then they showed us how you transport tube trains around. I haven't made this up. This is an actual show. <laughs> so I'm sure you're thinking, how do they make sure they get the trains in the right order? What's the easy way of working out the numbers? Obviously, right. we're going to make sure we get the right one in the right place. Yeah. The well, numbers must mean something. Well, first of all, 65 is the motor car number. 03s is the unit number. But also, if you take this 65 and go down to the next carriage, it's 67, which is the one that runs, it's his stable mate. And they must all stay together. Three and fours go together, and fives and six. Right the way up to ten. <laughs> so we've got ten units. Bingo! <laughs> yeah. You use a five digit numbering system. What could be simpler? <laughs> so the first one down would be six five, then six, no. Yeah, six five, then six seven. And then sevens. Surely, as long as you've got the engine on the front, what does it matter? <laughs> the Jane Austen season continued with persuasion. Not to be confused with the Roger Moore Tony Curtis vehicle, the Persuaders. <laughs> And I spotted a huge finger with green nail varnish on it. <laughs> it could be you. Like all the period dramas, Persuasion showed us the habits and customs of olden times, such as the now long forgotten role of the ink maid. Yeah, you were writing a letter and wanted to fill your pen, always there was the ink maid. You know when you're not sure whether to bite someone or kiss them? <laughs> I'll, I'll kiss him. I'll bite him. I'll kiss, kiss, bite. I'll kiss, bite, bite, bite. I'll kiss, kiss, bite, bite. I'll bite, I'll kiss, bite, kiss, bite, kiss, bite, bite, bite. <laughs> Channel 5 have got another sharp program. Hey! Yes, presented by Johnny Rotten. You know, from I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. <laughs> he has a highly individual presenting style. Sharks, born free, unlike me. They're tax free. Leave them alone. I will. All I'm doing is swimming with them. You too can. <laughs> huh? There's words in you know, filling up the Bible, and we all know what that's about. This is something else. It's nature, I think. Uh, all it makes me want to do is go, wee! <laughs> hmm. Here's a bit of him off duty. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Rotten, time for your medication. <laughs> the thing is, if you're as weird as Johnny Rotten, how do you make yourself look normal? Hang around with someone weirder than you. <laughs> Here's something I learned from Johnny. Last year, 791 people were killed by defective toasters. Only four by sharks. <laughs> now, I don't see no great rush to exterminate 100 million toasters. <laughs> anyway, then we wouldn't be able to make any toast, would we? <laughs> I mean, I like sharks, but the advantage of a toaster over a shark... <laughs> Obviously, a toaster takes up a lot less room on your worktop. <laughs> but which is better, a toaster or a shark? There's only one way to find out.
Welcome back to the best of TV Burp 4. Remember when there were budget cuts on Prime Evil? Charles, quickly move out of the way! <laughs> Richard Hammond gets job as Shepherd. <laughs> and Sean Tully's voice finally breaks on Corrie. 960 of you, please. <laughs> Channel 4's I Speak Animal Now, in which James French used telepathy to literally speak to animals with problems. Yeah, right. <laughs> First up was Nicole, who was having difficulty getting on her horse. Maybe there was a reason for that. Nicole was having a problem getting on her horse, Randy. <laughs> well... <laughs> Wait until you've calmed down a bit. No, nope. grow up. Randy's the horse's name. But you can pretty much talk to any animal, however small. If you have a glass and you explain to the spider to go into the glass and you're slow and you're gentle with it, it'll do it. Get in the cooker. Get in the cooker. I'll count to three. If you're not in the cooker... Oh, it's, let's see, go on. In you go, Fonzie. Let's see, uh, have a little hibernate. Um, <laughs> the micro speeds it up. It turns out he doesn't actually have to have the animal there with him to talk to it. No, he can do it over the internet. People send me pictures through the internet. Then I would use this picture to connect with the animal. You've got to be careful with some of those cat runes. <laughs> yeah. You never know you might be talking to. I once went online pretending to be a horse. Yeah, I got <laughs> chatting to someone. Then after about 20 minutes, I realised he was grooming me. <laughs> yeah, it was... It's a horse. Grooming. Mm. Which brings us to our TV voiceover highlights of the week. TV voiceover highlights of the With his mouth full of teddies, Jumble's urinating seemed defiant. <laughs> oh, on Real Extras, the story of our supporting artists hungry for fame, we were transported back to the killing fields of the Middle East, and it was really quite chilly. What are you doing here? I'm an unarmed man. You came to ruin my country. I promise I won't cause you no harm. I lie. <laughs> Almost as if you were there. If ever someone comes up to you and attempts to glorify war, show them that. And perhaps if Tony Blair had seen it, things might have turned out very different. Whatever happened to Meryl Streep? <laughs> Still busy at Christmas. <laughs> Theirs wasn't the only talent on show. There was Stephen, who was putting together a showreel. Just call him Mr. Versatility. He acts... Okay, punk. Stick him up. <laughs> 45 Magdon, the most powerful handgun in the world. Blow your head clean off. <laughs> it's as if Clint Eastwood's in the room. And he can sing. You raise me up so I can stand on my own. You raise me up. Now, again, a difficult song to sing if there's no musical backup or no microphone. <laughs> Yeah. Also, if you can't sing. <laughs> Mind you, you have to wonder about some of the acting ability when they can't even spit out their own chewing gum. Um, I don't need any music. Can you your chewing gum for us, please? Oh, sorry. I'll <laughs> 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 oh, forget it, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> hey. The other thing you can do... 
<laughs> is copy your heroes. And me, I like the action heroes. Uh, yeah, actors like Jane, uh, Jane, um... Uh, Jane Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Jane Claude Van Damme, yeah. Yeah. And, um... My other favourite, uh, Fester. Uh, Fester, um... Fester Sloan. Jane Claude Van Damme and Fester Stallone. That's right. Yes, I think it's... Don't you hate it, though, when you're trying to interrogate a suspect and he's constantly distracted by a fly? He tell me I can pay him back by bringing jobs to him. <laughs> he take my passport. I've been working for him ever since. Shall you help arrange the couriers for him? After they arrive, I sit with him in the flat until they are... This was the bill, and they bought out a uh, the bill computer game. Yeah, you have to run along and try and get up to the next level. Nate, he's above you, above you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a lot of running on the bill this week. Excuse me, I'm gonna have to go and help. and are fed up with just hugging, what's the next step in the relationship? <laughs> oh, just amazed. It tastes so... so, like, kind of creamy. This was Born Survivor with real-life tough guy Bear Grylls. <laughs> Bear Grylls had all sorts of little useful tips. This week he showed us how to survive in the middle of the French Alps and specifically, how to get out of an ice hole. Oh, OK, first thing I've got to do is try and get... Out. <laughs> try and get some semblance of control back again and fight this sense of shock and... Get out. The way I do this is to try and control my breathing and keep calm. And just get out. I can feel already my body temperature getting really low. And my legs are going pretty numb and it's time to be getting out of here. At last! The final thing I've got to remember is to go out this way. Just get out of the hole! He does finally manage to make it out. But of course, there's a special way to do it. You don't just flap about like a seal. The question is, how do you dry yourself off in the middle of the freezing cold Alps without a towel? OK, now I've just got to get dry, uh, but obviously I've just got no towel. Uh, what I can do, though, is use some of this snow, and even though it looks completely crazy, it's a really good way just to absorb some of, some of the moisture off my body, and then just 
Snow, of course. Nature's towel. He's a born survivor. He's proved that to survive in any situation, all you need is the bare necessities. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Bear Grylls! Necessities of Mother Nature's recipes, just the bare necessities of life. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, I could be fond of my big home. The bees are buzzing in the trees to make some honey just for me. If you look under the rocks and plants and take a glance at the fancy ants and maybe even try a few. You eat ants? You better believe it. <laughs> the bare necessities of life will come to you. Will come to you. That's all from us. And Harry Hill's TV Burp Gold DVD is available in store and online. Next here on ITV One, Mina's debating whether to give in to her half-blood heritage in Demons.